Hello, today I have some USB charging batteries. I watched a video on Project Farm a while back, the yearly AA battery roundup. Man, I need to get more timely at these things. And it was very interesting. There was one thing missing though. These new batteries that are really lithium ion batteries stuffed into a normal battery sleeve, but with a special feature. There are hundreds of these models out there now, and this is just one example. And I'm assuming they're all really going to be pretty similar. So are these batteries any good? Are they better than a normal AA battery? And can they store more than a typical rechargeable AA or AAA battery? That's what I plan to find out. I picked up a pack of four AA and a pack of four AAA batteries. They have some claims on the box. There's no paperwork in the box. There's no real specifications like how much current they can handle or what the current, the rated capacity was tested at. And there's no discharge curves you'd find for a good battery. So like many of these things, I'm going to do what I do and test these things to find out what kind of performance they really have and if they can hold up to the big label battery capacities. As usual, links in the descriptions and special thanks to my patrons for continuing to support the channel. So first up, a comparison. The size of these look to be dead on. The AA is right on with the AA battery from a competitor. The AAA is also exactly on the size. So that's a really simple but really good first step. They are going to fit in normal battery holders. So the answer looks like yes, they should fit in your electronics, which is a first pass acceptance criteria. But once you dig a little deeper, there's the shape of the connector. The typical AA and AAA battery terminal on the positive side is a more curved piece of metal. These have smaller and very sharp edged positive terminals, and this could create some issues with the battery holders and creating a poor contact. The negative side is also different on these. The off-the-shelf alkaline batteries have a specific shape to the bottom. The AA version of the rechargeable matches this, but the AAA version has a very flat terminal connection. Again, this could create issues with battery terminals and create a poor connection. All batteries store energy. The unit of energy are presented here as well as some basic calculations. We can see that the watt hour figures being presented are calculated at nominal 1.5 volt cell voltages. We'll check later on. That is probably not true, so they're overstating the capacity by some amount. The AAA battery is going to give you approximately 1.1 watt hours if the claims are true though. The AA battery is quite a bit more, claiming about 3 watt hours of capacity, which is not far off the full fat AA battery. I don't think it will get too close to this. Notice that these batteries lack the 3.7 volt nominal capacity of lithium ion cells, so the battery inside is actually much smaller. Let's look at some AA and AAA battery nominal capacities from Wikipedia. We can find this in the data sheets for these, but I'm going to use Wikipedia because it's faster. Links to the full articles in the description. They have some interesting notes, which are true on the packaging of these lithium ion batteries, like they state the capacity of these in milliwatt hours instead of milliamp hours. Anyway, regardless, watt hours are the terms I like to use. So in this case, about 3.9 watt hours for a AA battery and about 1.5 watt hours for a AAA battery. So the claims of these rechargeables is already lower, but that's expected because they are rechargeable. Okay, time to plug them in and see how they do charging. The cables that come with the AA are a USB-A to 4 USB-C cable. This is a custom cable and it is really a USB-A charging device, so don't expect this to work with a smart charger. The other cable is a USB-A to USB micro B with four connectors again, which I can hear everyone screaming already. I think they had to do this to fit it in the space. It is slightly smaller and yeah, it's less reliable too. It looks like one AAA sized battery with a relatively efficient charger uses about one watt per cell to charge and the AA batteries use about two and a half watts per cell to charge. Seems slow, but it's not bad for a tiny battery. Let's see if that charge rate is causing any thermal issues. These batteries at lower power levels seem to be fairly stable. Not too much to talk about here. They get a little bit warm as expected, but not bad. 35 degrees C or so is very acceptable. The two amps on the USB-A connector for the AA battery is getting a little warm, so that's a pretty cheap connector. They could do better there, I guess. Overall though, reasonable temperatures during charging. One note with these batteries, because they have a little voltage converter in them, they do have some efficiency losses for the converters. So this will suffer some capacity loss based on the load. The converter is what allows the battery to supply a nominal 1.5 volts to your device from the 3.7 volt nominal cell. This also does the work of converting the 5 volt from the charger to the 3.7 volts of the cell. 
The battery terminals while charging do present with the charging voltage, 5 volts, so they can't be in a product and charged. That is also probably why the charging plug is on the end of the battery, so you can't do that. I also tested the USB connector at the end and found the shell not to be connected to either end of the battery, so no chance of a short circuit there. But during charging, the shell is very close to the positive terminal, and that would short out the charger if any metal was in that area. Okay, time to plug them into something to load them up and see what the output looks like and see how much power they can deliver. I had to adapt these battery holders to four wires so that I can get an accurate measurement of the performance of these batteries. It is important to use four wire sensing so the voltage can be measured at the cell and not after a length of skinny lossy wire. If you want to know more about these four wire measurements, let me know. I had quite an adventure trying some cheap AA and AAA battery holders. Wow, they're all terrible. You will waste half of the energy of the cell in a bad connection. You need to buy good battery holders. I ended up going on Mauser and picking these up. What a difference. They're expensive, but they are functional. Starting with a AAA battery, it looks like with a full charge, the voltage on this battery is at 1.4 volts. With a 500 milliamp load, the voltage drops to 1.3 volts. With a 1 amp load, the voltage is 1.28. The battery shut down at 2 amps load, but this does a cycling on and off, so it tries to start again with the load present. This means the maximum power this battery can deliver is about 2 watts, because the voltage drops to 1 at this current level. This is impressive for a AAA sized battery. Next up is the AA battery. It looks like with a full charge the voltage is about 1.4 volts. With a 500 milliamp load it drops to, again, about 1.4 volts. With a 1 amp load, the voltage drops to about 1.37, and the battery shut down with about 2.5 amps load. It actually does the same thing, it turns on and off, so it tries again and again in a cycle. This means the maximum power the battery can deliver was about 3.8 watts. This is a moderate current, so these batteries may not work in an application that needs a lot of instantaneous power. It's surprisingly high for such a tiny cell, and a power converter fit in there as well, but again, it has limits. So these batteries are pretty capable, and looking at the AA for its general performance metrics, we can see that, yeah, it's going to lose a pretty significant amount of energy while charging and discharging, but this is going to be the case with any rechargeable battery. There are some oddball things, like the custom USB-A to USB-C cable, and the output will hit 5 volts on the terminals while being charged, so don't keep them in the product while charging, although the connector is on the end, so you can't really do that. The shape of the discharge does drop in voltage as the cell discharges, so it approximates a normal battery discharge curve. It isn't perfect as it cuts out abruptly, but it should allow battery capacity gauges to still work approximately. The AA battery performance ended up around 2.1 watt hours at 1 amp. The cell had a measured external series resistance of about 100 milliohms, so this is on the higher side, so it makes sense that the current is a bit limited. There is also the issue of quiescent currents with these batteries, so if you use them with devices in a light load power requirement all the time, they're probably not going to last long, since they have to keep that power converter active. So expect much shorter run times from that. It does better at lower currents, but not much because you reach the limit of the converter efficiency. The AAA battery has scaled back performance versus the AA cell. Making it much smaller means you have to trade that USB-C port for a USB micro B port, which is pretty breakable port, so care when inserting and disconnecting the cells is required. The external series resistance of these cells was a little higher at about 200 milliohms. This is expected for the smaller battery and converter. The fact is that this can still get to 2 amps, which isn't bad for short duration requirements. This will suffer the same quiescent current issues with light loads, so expect shorter run times with lighter loads than you think. So what do you think? Are these little rechargeable batteries worth it? Do you think they will last in the long run, or do you think they are junk and the connectors are going to break too easily to be worth it? It looks like any USB-A to C or USB-A to micro B cable will charge them, and they are pretty readily available, so charging shouldn't be an issue, but if you want to use a USB-C to C cable and a smart charger, it is not going to work. So versus a normal AA battery, they don't have the energy and the initial cost is much higher. So on a one-off cell basis, of course, the value is much better for a normal alkaline battery cell and you can get them everywhere. But versus any other rechargeable battery, they seem like a viable option to me. Let me know what you think down in the comments and if there are any other suggestions for content like this. If you recalculate the value with the idea that they can be used around 500 times, you will find that the value of these is actually far beyond that of a normal battery cell as with any rechargeable. One issue with these is that you can expect the from the wall to your device 
energy to be about 30 to 40 percent of the energy you put in um, so that's not the greatest efficiency I have seen some options that use a full fat lithium ion cell and then a dummy cell next to it for the other cell if the batteries are in series. This matches the voltage better and eliminates the converter losses so you can potentially get a lot more energy out of the cell in total. If you use an efficient battery charger, this is a good option. Of course, you need to use a protected lithium ion cell. One final note on these, some devices use more than one cell in parallel. This isn't great practice, but it does happen. These cells will fight each other and do not work well in parallel. If cells aren't balanced before you do parallel them, high currents will flow with normal batteries. The dummy cell will also not work in these devices. It would actually short the battery out. So yeah, there's no foolproof solution beyond normal batteries or appropriate voltage cells. I still mostly use regular batteries, not rechargeables. I will throw these into a few pieces of equipment to see how long they last. I'll update in the comments over time. As of now, the AA batteries don't appear to be available from this company, but there are heaps available from other companies. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Goodbye.